Nelson here with your Untamed Science Podcast. Now, it's that time of year again, and that means that our lakes and our ponds are changing. But do you know what that means? The ever-changing lake. I grew up on a lake. In fact, it was the lake that I spent hours and hours skiing on that made me fall in love with biology. So I think it's really important that everybody knows the truth about how lakes work. So today, we're giving you a crash course. Of course, the first thing that you have to do is you have to know how to talk intelligently about the lake. And it turns out there's a lot of different zones in the lake. You have the nearshore littoral zone, the open water limnetic zone, the deep water profundal zone, and then at the bottom of the lake, the benthic zone. While we're talking about this, it's important to note that not all lakes are the same. One of my favorites, Lake Michigan. In fact, it's so big that you can actually dive on huge wooden ships. And a lake like that gets mixed really well and harbors a ton of life. But you visit that lake in the winter and it's covered in ice. Other lakes include warm swampy lakes, small ponds, giant tropical lakes, and beautiful mountain lakes. So that's a lot of lakes, and some of them are pretty different. But since most of you live in the temperate zone, let's look at a typical temperate lake like the one I grew up on. Now, a typical temperate lake will cycle year after year. In the summer, the sun heats up the surface water, and the wind helps circulate the surface, but a thermocline develops and cold water stays deep. Then, in the autumn, the surface water cools, allowing the lake to circulate. In the winter, ice forms at the surface with the warmer water underneath. As the spring comes, the water warms and the lake turns over again. Remember though, if we don't have a period of cold, the lake won't cycle. For instance, this is Lake Gatun on the Panama Canal. I lived there for about six months, and despite having to deal with crocodiles, there is a difference in that lake. The difference really is that the lake doesn't cycle. The surface doesn't mix with the deeper cold water, and that water remains anoxic. Now the other thing to remember is that any lake will never be around forever because a lake is actually slowly getting filled in. You see, it works like this. Take this small lake here in the forest. It will slowly accumulate sediment as debris and other material falls into the lake, and then those sediments build up. Over time, they become marsh areas, or will eventually disappear forever. And of course, it's kind of fun to realize that in the grand scheme of things, you're on a lake that's only around for a very short period of time. Pretty cool, huh? 